Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's session for our Understanding Municipal Government series. So nice to have many folks on. Um, and we're really delighted to have Lindsay here with us this evening. Before we get more into it, sorry, that's my son. He's a little loud. Um, just like to start by acknowledging that um, those of us in Anchorage, we live, work, and play on the ancestral land of the Denina people. And we thank them for their past, present, and future stewardship of the lands we are on. And my name is Amanda. Um, I work at Alaska Humanities Forum, and I have the good fortune to serve on the board at ALP. And so I'm really delighted to be able to be with everyone tonight and, and to uh, facilitate with Lindsay, Heidi. And a thank you as we open up to um, Anchorage Public Library, Catholic Social Services, the Peer Leader Navigators, and of course to ALP for putting this together. Thank you to Naki, who is on <laughs> for organizing much of this. Um, we were just commenting earlier before folks came on that at least Lindsay and I don't know of many opportunities in Anchorage to really ask questions about municipal government um, and about how to become a part of, you know, deciding what happens in our communities. So I just think this is a wonderful series. Our presenter tonight um, is Lindsay Hajduk and Lindsay comes to us from NeighborWorks Alaska, where she works in community building. And NeighborWorks Alaska is focused on promoting affordable housing, food security, justice reform and reentry, and local civic issues. She's worked for over a decade in nonprofit organizations dedicated to the environment, youth, fundraising, and now community. Currently, Lindsay volunteers as the president of the Spinard Community Council. She serves on the Anchorage Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and she also previously served on the board for Bike Anchorage and as an adult advisor on the Anchorage Youth Advisory Commission. Lindsay is fortunate to live in Alaska on unceded Denina lands in present day Anchorage, where she gets to hike, bike, berry pick, and more with her husband and her puppy. Lindsay, welcome. We're, we're so happy to have you. Thank you for being here. Great. Thank you for that introduction. I'm really excited to be here with you all tonight and talk about community councils. It's an issue that I like to kind of nerd out on. And so you're my people. I'm excited uh, to talk more about it. Um, so I'm going to start with just a presentation and then I'll try to monitor the chat, but if anybody wants to just tune in throughout and speak up, um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take it as we go. And then we'll have plenty of time afterwards to have a good discussion too. So no need to, um, to hurry or get anything in <laughs> quickly. So um, I'm just going to start with a, a presentation um, that'll give a little bit of background on my organization, NeighborWorks Alaska, and why I'm engaged in this work. I get to do it in my day job, and I get to volunteer in my real life uh, in this work. And then we'll dig into some of the kind of basics of what a community council is, how do they work, and, and why it's even important to get involved. And like I said, we'll have lots of time for questions and discussion. And I'm gonna just put a disclaimer that a lot of my pictures are based in Spinard. I am from, uh, I live in Spinard, and so I've got the Spinard Community Council at the ready when it comes to pictures and things, but I, um, I'm happy to talk more about other councils and um, we can even like pull up the website and kind of dig into another council if you wanna look more about what's going on in your area. So just a little bit of background about NeighborWorks Alaska. You may have heard of us in the context of providing affordable housing. We have um, a few different ways that we support and engage in the community, but we're really dedicated to improving the quality of life for families and individuals in our community. And it's really anchored in having housing security and strengthening our neighborhoods to make them safer and more connected. And that's kind of more where I come in. 
but a, a bulk of our work really is providing housing. We're an organization that started right here in Spinard. Uh, neighbors came together around their kitchen table in 1980 and said, what do we need to do to make this neighborhood safer? How do we make sure people can afford to live here and have good housing? And how do we reinvest in our community with businesses, the right kinds of businesses? Because Spinard does have a reputation in our community and it really was neighbors coming together to say, how do we make this place safe for everyone? So they came together and formed Anchorage Neighborhood Housing Services, which is NeighborWorks Alaska in 1981, so 40 years ago. We've been providing affordable housing. So we do that with um, owning nine apartment buildings all throughout Anchorage. And we manage six other buildings for other providers. They provide housing for folks at different income levels. Uh, some buildings and properties are more for uh, seniors and elders. Some are for folks with other physical disabilities. Um, but it's really just trying to serve and meet the needs of, of Anchorage residents across our community. We also have a home ownership center where we provide loans and education and counseling. So first time home buyers uh, who are interested in down payment assistance or um, need to modify their homes for some, for some mobility upgrades, NeighborWorks Alaska provides that as well. So that's like the bulk of what we do. It's that really um, tangible housing providing uh, for, for our neighbors and residents. And where I come in is where we really dig into community engagement. So it's one thing to provide the housing and then it's another an important step to be able to make sure that we're providing housing in communities where it's safe and easy to get around, where you can um, access restaurants or work or libraries, uh, and just really think about that quality of life of where you live and how you live. So much of my work is working with uh, different neighborhoods and working with uh, residents, people who live there to think about what are some issues that they're facing what solutions do they want to bring together and how can we work towards them? So it's, it's a big, it's a big uh, bucket of community engagement. We work with residents for trainings and partnerships. Um, we work on improving local neighborhoods like improving trails or parks or even neighborhood planning documents. Uh, we also work on, on public art events and community events. Uh, we also support uh, growing food security in our community garden network. So if you've heard of Anchor Gardens, I could tell you more about it. Um, but it's, a, it's a, an effort to bring community together. And we also support the Anchorage Reentry Coalition, which helps um, support and house folks who are coming out of the justice system and reintegrating in our community. So, so this is just the context. It's a huge bucket of what we do um, and we want to be responsive to local issues so that's why we kind of have our, our hand in all of these areas because the local issues that we face at our neighborhood level are what impacts our day-to-day -day lives and it's also how we as neighbors and residents can get involved take on some more leadership and make a positive impact in our community. So that's why we are set up in a way to help facilitate, support that, and be part of those efforts. So that's what I'm gonna focus on is that neighborhood level of, of things. So the community councils. And if you've been participating in, in these um, sessions the last few weeks, you've probably heard it brought up a few times, uh, even at the last one about the assembly. Well, you can start by going to your community councils and um, they can kind of be like, what is a community council? How do I get involved? They're different in every single part of town. And so it can feel a bit intimidating to navigate that system and really get involved. But when it comes down to it, this quote by Walt Parker, who is a longtime community organizer, um, said, a great city is simply a collection of great neighborhoods. So it's thinking about all these little communities that we live in that makes the whole of Anchorage. And we want them all to be vibrant and thriving and safe. And an avenue to be engaged on that is through 
our community councils. So I'm gonna go through the who, what, where, when, why of councils just to, to break it all down. Um, they're essentially uh, self-governing bodies that are defined ge geographically. So we have 38 community councils all throughout Anchorage and they're, they're whoever lives within those boundaries. So it can be homeowners or renters. It can be a property owner or a business owner that you know has an address in that community council area. They can be a member. Um, nonprofits can also be members or other other entities. So uh, even if your uh, nonprofit might not have a physical address in a neighborhood, if you're working on a project in the community, you might actually also be able to be a member. Um, and then there is there is like an age um, limit just on some certain things like voting or participating on the executive boards and that's an age limit of either 18 years old and some councils lower that to 16 year olds who can participate and vote. That doesn't mean you can't show up and be involved. Um, it just gets a little like, can they vote? Can they serve on the board? There's, there's some differences there, but everybody and anybody can be a part of their local community council. And you ask, well, what do they, what do they do and why? Um, they're private and they're private uh, councils. They're not part of like the assembly system. We don't vote like you do on the municipal ballots for these but they are voluntary and they're self-governing. So you vote at the meetings, but you don't have like a, a citywide vote by all of the registered voters in the area to get people involved. It's all voluntary. You say, hey, I wanna volunteer and do this and be part of it and get involved and showing up is the biggest thing you can do there. The purpose of the community council is so that they can be advisory to the Anchorage Assembly. So the assembly takes on lots of different issues and one way to distill for them like what is the feeling of this neighborhood on this issue is to go to the community council to provide education about the topics to get input on the issues and maybe the council will take a position or pass a resolution to help the assembly or other decision makers understand kind of what what the community wants and what the consensus is. So it provides this, this avenue for residents to engage and participate in their local issues that can get into the more nitty gritty of what's going on in your local community rather than you know just going to the assembly and an issue can be you know already really far down um, the line. It could could have already been talked about and moved and drafted and worked on and almost finished and finalized or adopted um, by the time it gets to the assembly but a lot of the work can happen at the local community council level and you might ask what what do you work on at a community council level um, there are a few there are a lot of things. <laughs> so I highlighted the ones at the bottom issues that impact an area or other because there are a lot of issues, but there are some that are pretty clearly spelled out of what topics a council could and should work on. And those, many of them involve planning. So different efforts in your neighborhood um, that look at planning documents and that's like uh, what kind of transportation or zoning happens in your district are there residential properties or business district or industrial how do those all impact each other so we have a lot of different um, planning efforts the comprehensive plan looks at anchorage as a whole but your neighborhood might have a neighborhood specific plan that gets into more of the details of what's happening locally and on the ground or um, there could be planning efforts around uh, future developments and other projects. So that's a big part of what a council can pay attention to and weigh in on. And also um, be kind of the first response for, for other either actions or laws that can impact your local area as well. Um, 
I also put capital improvement project priorities on here because that's another big one. It, it's basically roads, trails, parks, um, the physical environment that we're in because those projects are pretty expensive to upgrade or improve or change. And so every year the assembly goes to a community council and says, what are the priority roads, trails, and parks you want improved in your neighborhood? And if you keep those projects high on the list, there's a chance they could get funded and move forward. And that's a, that's a big deal. And it's a, a very clear way a community council can uh, advise the assembly on, on that issue. Hey, Lindsay, mm -hmm. could I ask a question? Yes. And I know I'm, there's some questions in the chat too, but I can't click on it. <laughs> so help. We've got a couple comments. Aaron had said like, oh, that's a really good point. And then I just commented, I didn't realize community councils advise the assembly. Um, so we're good on the chat. Thank you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, and I was just wondering, I've seen in Spinard, they have really nice wide sidewalks now and like there's a walking district was the community the community council a part of like pushing that forward and i see you nodding Ooh. yeah absolutely that's a good example so if you have visited spinard road between benson and hillcrest so that's that area that's kind of busy and has lots of restaurants and shops uh, beartooth is one of those chilkoot charlie's bosco's comics um, the whole shopping center that used to have REI in it. So that kind of northern section of Spinard Road took a long time. Uh, the community council and businesses were involved in it for well over a decade, trying to improve the roadway to make it safer for pedestrians and bicyclists and for people driving in cars. It was just set up in a way that it was fast, there were a lot of uh, narrow lanes that curved, and um, there were a lot of collisions between cars and cars and pedestrians and bicyclists. So it took a long time to advocate for those improvements. And, um, and we looked to that, those improvements, as a success story in creating what is a um, a smaller plan. So I mentioned there's a comprehensive plan of all of Anchorage. We have a Spinard corridor plan. It's kind of like a neighborhood plan that looked at what do we want to do to make our, our community more walkable and bikeable and uh, more complementary to have the right kind of businesses that you can get to easily. So having that kind of like restaurant district or uh, easy access to other commercial spaces. Like you can't just have it kind of patchwork throughout the neighborhood. You want it to make sense. You want it to be on the bus route. You want it to be on all of these um, like complementary uh, places so that you can easily get around. And so we just got that corridor plan adopted. I think it was initiated. It might've been 2014 or 15 and the assembly just adopted it last uh, fall and it actually just won an Alaska Planning Association award uh, for one of the, yeah, it's the North Corridor plan, uh, for one of the more innovative plans for Anchorage. It looks at transportation and it looks at land use and it says how can we make these work well and together and the Spinard Community Council convened work groups, had meetings with the planning department, um, had them present at our community council meetings, and we just tried to get as many people to provide input and comments, and then we compiled our own comments um, so that we could make the best plan we can have. And plan, planning documents don't sound that exciting, <laughs> but what they do is they help to create a vision and some goals for Spinard. And uh, it's everything from, you know, making our community safe and walkable to making sure we can maintain our infrastructure, our roads and, and sidewalks in the winter time. You know, it spans all of this. So we've got these goals and visions. And then when it comes to projects further down the line that we put in our capital improvement priority list, they can get funded and meet the goals that are laid out within the planning document. So 
that section of Spinard is great, but it's really short. So the next phase of it is actually from Benson to Minnesota, Minnesota Drive. And it's in the design process right now. So we're looking at it and we're saying, hey, we want it to mirror what's going on in the north section. And we want it to adhere to all the goals and principles in the Spinard Corridor Plan. And we're gonna be there every step of the way <laughs> to get this going, even though they might not break ground for construction until 2025 or later. So they take a long time. And that's partly why community councils being engaged on this like minutia early on is really important because these efforts take a long time. And the planning part where it comes to, to roads, trails and parks is big because we all care about those in our neighborhoods. And then there's this other side on this list about public review notices. And those are things like um, alcohol licenses or marijuana licenses. Those licenses come to the council for feedback. So if you have a business in your neighborhood that you're like, mm, they're not, they're not good neighbors, bad things are happening there, you can come to the community council and air those issues. And the council has a way to weigh in on whether or not the license um, could get conditions on it. You can request it to the assembly. Um, you could have a memorandum of understanding with the businesses that just says, hey, if you have problems, we're going to come, we're going to ask you to come to our meeting and we're going to work it out. And if you don't do that, then we'll go to the assembly. You know, so there are just some mechanisms where the council can weigh in on those really tangible things where um, it might seem really hard. Like, oh, what do you do with this bar that has, you know, really loud music, has really bad parking, so it spills out into the neighborhood or, um, you know, those kinds of issues. That's stuff you can bring to your community council and um, weigh in on. So those are like the really, like just like tangible things, roads, trails, parks, alcohol and marijuana licenses. And there are a few other ones listed there, but those kind of are the big ones. And, and then I said other and other issues that impact your area because it really is a lot of things that your community council can work on. Uh, some of them are working right now, like Mountain View Community Council has a committee to create more murals in Mountain View. Other ones have um, work groups, like Midtown has a group that really looks at liquor licenses because they have like over 60 liquor licenses in just Midtown alone, and on and on and on. So I'll, I'll go into more issues and things going forward, but there are, there, those are some of the reasons to become involved in your community council. And I'm just going to touch briefly on how they work. Um, because they're all a little bit different. And I put some of the information in gray, just references to the municipal documents that exist, because uh, community councils are written in our municipal charter, and then we have municipal code, and then we have specific ordinances. And all of those are guiding documents for what a community council is, what it can and cannot do, and how it can function. So it isn't, like I said, it's not government, but it's an important part of our local government process because it gives residents that avenue to have uh, a voice in the assembly, in the mayor's office on, on different issues that impact us. So each council is different. They have their own bylaws, but they have to be approved and within the approved, you know, written, uh, you know, what's written within muni code and ordinance and all of that. Um, but they're all slightly different. But each council, basically, your neighbors come together and you elect a, an executive board. So you've got your president, a vice president, a treasurer, and secretary. And some of them might have at large members or committee chairs, other folks that serve on the executive board. And the executive board probably does, you know, the work to come together each month to figure out what issues are going on in the community, what agenda to, to come together, um, and just help make sure the meetings run well. Uh, some of the councils have, well, all of the councils have bank accounts, and so just making sure money is collected and, and spent in appropriate ways and that kind of thing. 
uh, and the secretary, of course, takes, takes the notes, the minutes for each meeting, and those should be posted online so that you can see, like, oh, I missed last month. What are they talking about? You could go and check out what they've been working on. So they all have their different roles, um, and they help convene the community council each month. And I just wanted to note that each community council is supported by the Federation of Community Councils. And just a little bit about the Federation. So it's, it's really just this, the body that convenes all of the 38 community councils. So the Federation of Community Councils is its own nonprofit organization and each council is underneath it. So it is, um, it's funny because it's not in code to have a Federation of Community Councils, but it's the nonprofit that the assembly contracts with every year to be able to support the councils. So they have staff, they have a couple part-time staff members, and they help each council with sending mail, managing their email listserv, managing all the websites, coordinating issues and things going on in each council, and they meet each month. So you have a representative from each council that can show up to the Federation of Community Councils on some of the big picture issues going on in, in Anchorage, and also to share out, hey, here are the things going on in my neighborhood, um, so that you can just have this one body that brings everyone together. But they are the saving grace for all of the councils because they help with that very basic infrastructure piece of like, how do we email, how do we tell people when to meet, and all of that. So if you hear people talk about the Federation of Community Councils, or if you go to any of our websites, it's all routed through the FCC. So back to why. <laughs> I thought I would just go back to story because we were kind of hitting the who, what, where, when, why. Um, and back, back to that why piece. So I just wanted to share a little bit about myself and why and how I got involved. Um, well, I moved to Spinard in 2012 and I was, I started attending meetings when I just rented an apartment and uh, I was talking to Amanda before we started and we were just saying it's kind of intimidating to show up to these meetings and not really know who's going to be there. Some people have been participating in their community councils for decades. And so they're like, we know what's going on. And you're like, I don't, but I want to. <laughs> and so there's definitely a lot of learning there. And so I, I was interested, I attended some of the meetings and then I bought a home in 2015 and, and really started getting a little bit more engaged in Spinard and wanting to make it my home. Um, so I, I uh, stepped up to join the executive board as secretary in 2019. And then I started serving as president last year right before COVID happened. So we've had lots of Zoom <laughs> meetings since then. Um, and then I'm still serving as president. We have two year term limits for president. So I'm on my way out <laughs> next February. Um, but we are working on just trying to make sure people can stay engaged uh, during COVID as we transition back to meeting in person or keeping things online, doing all of that. But one of the things that I really care about and, and brought focus to is about community building and getting people connected. Um, so these are a couple pictures of me in the palm tree. If you've been through Spinard, you know there's a weird quirky palm tree <laughs> going on there. Um, and we kind of captured that and made that our It's Always Sunny in Spinard logo for, for our community council. Um, but we've been having Zoom meetings. So this, this bottom picture is actually a screenshot of one of our Zoom meetings where I'm just, I think, going over the agenda and getting things set up. So many of our council meetings have been meeting on Zoom and are now transitioning to meeting back in person. But what I really cared most about um, was making our meetings more inclusive, more inviting, more fun, and more focused, because you can sometimes show up to meetings where maybe just a few people speak and, and maybe they're just, um, they're not really looking towards solutions, they're, they're, and they're, they're venting or airing grievances. And I think a way to keep people engaged and really feel like you can make a difference is if you have really clear goals and opportunities that you're focusing on. So that's part of what I've 
hopefully tried to bring to this Bernard Community Council since I've been involved. And so I'm just gonna go over what, what, do you, what to expect when you're um, participating in these meetings. So I mentioned they're monthly. Sometimes they're canceled, especially in the summertime. So my council doesn't meet in July or August. Some of them keep meeting, but some of them take summer off. Um, and like I said, they're, they're either on Zoom or they're in person. Some of them have been doing both, which has been really great. And the meetings are usually an hour and a half to two hours long. So they usually post an agenda ahead of time so that when you show up, you can kind of know what's gonna be covered. Um, anybody can attend. So even if it's a community council that you don't live in or you don't have a business in, if you're interested in the issues or you wanna hear what folks are talking about, you're welcome to attend meetings. You just let people know, hey, I'm here, I'm a guest. I'm just interested to learn. Um, there's sometimes a difference between membership and voting members. So it really gets back to those bylaws and how they're different in each council. Membership often just means, do you live there? Do you have a business, property within the council boundaries? And usually that means you can then vote. Uh, sometimes voting members are, are you meet those things and you've been to one meeting in the last year and then you can vote on topics. They're just different in each council area. And you can always ask or you can email the president and you can ask questions to the president or someone on their executive board. And you can even email them to suggest like, hey, I, I want this to be on the agenda. Can we talk about this? Can we take an action on this? And you can, you can do that. That's the easiest way to get on the agenda is just to ask. And, um, and, like, and I mentioned that uh, councils can take action and usually they can take action by passing resolutions or signing letters of, you know, of support or of a decision that has been made. But they're often like pretty formal resolutions with the whereas and then therefore be it resolved clauses just because those resolutions then can be sent to the assembly or to a planning department or whatever the appropriate body is to be an official decision by the council because resolutions just have the clear vote, like how many people voted for it, how many people voted against. So I'm showing just a, a typical agenda, and this is the Mountain View Community Council meeting for June. They're all slightly different, but follow a similar pattern for the most part. There's usually a welcome on the agenda, um, then they do regular updates or reports from everything from your state legislator, assembly members, school board members, or even um, the police department or other, other uh, city agencies. And then there might be some discussion on local topics or issues or education presentations from different guests to the council. And then there's usually a public announcement section where folks can share topics of, of issues and things that are going on or events and ways to get involved. And so looking at the Mountain View Community Council agenda, it, it follows that, that pretty well where they have their, their standing, just you know, their standing items as they're welcome into the meeting. Um, they have their reports, so they have um, their president and treasurer, but then they also have, um, they're, they're like chairs for these issues. So a youth committee or a public safety committee, they have those volunteers share out their standing reports of what happened in the last month. Their elected officials then all get to report out. So it's a really good opportunity to have some, some face time with your legislators or your assembly members where you can hear what issues and priorities they have, but you can also ask questions and let them know, hey, the issues and priorities that I care about should be your top priorities. So good opportunity to share um, and, and advocate for what you care about at those meetings too. And um, their new business presentations were, were presentations of other folks invited. So Providence Health Services was presenting at their meeting about a mobile clinic that would be happening in their neighborhood. And um, this, this uh, retail location, that was a marijuana license. So this, the business owner who wants to open this retail marijuana store needed, need to present to the community council to share what their, 
wanting to do what the business plan will be and to hear if there are any concerns or questions people have within the council. And then they likely would sign a memorandum of understanding to be a good neighbor. Here's what it takes to be a good neighbor in our area. So that's their like action items that they can take part of and have the whole council vote on and participate in. And then they wrap up and they talk, they share community member comments, announcements, and those kinds of things. So that's the typical flow. And it usually takes an hour and a half or two hours, but it's really the report outs, especially of the elected officials that can get long. People like to talk a lot <laughs> at the meetings. So that's one example. And like I said, each council is different, but you can find past agendas and the current agendas on each website to just make sure you're your, um, you know what to, what's coming out. So just a couple other considerations and things to note is that the meetings are open to everyone, but language or other accommodations are not mandatory for community council meetings. So assembly um, and other meetings, you know, there's a requirement to, for folks maybe with hearing or um, visual impairment, there are some accommodations that need to happen because of the Open Meetings Act. But community councils are not part of local government. They're an avenue for residents. And so sometimes they're hard to hear in the meetings. There aren't language translations or interpretations and other things like that. So those are important things to consider just to make sure you can fully participate in the council meetings. Um, membership is also based on location, like I said, so not citizen status. There's, there's nothing around that. It's, it's, are you within this boundary? Um, and then it's also really important just to note that they're nonpartisan and non-political. So um, councils will often invite folks, like if they're running for office, if they're running for assembly or for the state legislature, to introduce themselves, but they don't endorse any candidates and they can't endorse or uh, support different ordinances or ballot measures, things like that, they, they can educate. And so that's when they are that convening body, it's to build relationships and educate about issues, including political candidates or um, laws and those kinds of things. So with that, I'm just going to go into a little bit about how to find and join your council. And I just have a few slides on it, but we can always go to the website and, and dig into it if somebody has um, their council that they want to ask about. Um, but if you just go to communitycouncils.org, that takes you to the whole website with each different council kind of nestled within it. And then info at communitycouncils.org is the general email to the Federation of Community Councils. So if you were to email that and say, hey, I live here, I have questions, what do I do? They can help direct you. So that's the, the staff members with the Federation of Community Councils. They, they um, will be able to help make sure that you can navigate and get to the right place you need to be. And so I just wanted to note that community councils and assembly districts don't overlap perfectly. <laughs> this is a hard map to read, but it's the best one I could find, uh, where the green lines are the assembly districts and the brown lines are community council districts. So if you look at three, this um, western side of Anchorage is the West Anchorage Assembly uh, District. And it is made of the Turnigan, Sand Lake, Taku Campbell, Spinard, and North Star Community Councils. So there are five community council parts that are within this one district. So some councils have multiple assembly representatives, some have multiple state legislators. Um, it just is a funny like overlay onto it all. So that's just to note that um, if you find if you find out where which council you're in, you can then find out your assembly district, but it, it might not be perfect with somebody else who lives in another part of your same community council because the lines are funny. So here is um, the map on the website to find your council district. You can type in your address. And so this is just, you know, me typing one, two, three, and it's starting to pull in. Um, your your address and it'll take you right to 
your neighborhood so that you can see all of these different names on the different community councils um, just within this part of Anchorage. There are councils within Eagle River and Girdwood as well. Um, just hard to capture on the map because we're such a big place. Um, and then if you also go to that communitycouncils.org website, you can sign up. You click on sign up and you can sign up to an email list to get all of the email alerts from within your council area once you figure out which one that is or within multiple council areas because you can live in one place and you might have a business in another place and you could be a part a member of your community council where you live and of the community council that you have the business location in as well so there's that caveat too <laughs> and then um, and then I just wanted to stress to uh, why it's important to get involved. So these, these are the things I care a lot about. It's about getting people to come together and build community. Um, it's less tracking all of the liquor licenses and marijuana licenses. I do it, but <laughs> it's harder for me to get excited about. I get excited about our, um, you know, community cleanup efforts that we have. Uh, that that wall behind us in Mountain View just got a new mural on it, like I mentioned. Uh, we're doing a ribbon cutting when we had the repavement of our Fish Creek Trail within Spinard. And local community garden efforts are what I care and love most about. Um, so that's just my overview. I know I talked a lot about what our councils are and why. Um, and like I said, I'm happy to answer questions but if somebody lives in a, in an area or doesn't know which council um, they're in we can go to the website and search and just kind of navigate and i can show you where and how to find things like agendas and where to show up for your community council meetings because they all meet in different places some of them meet in churches some of them meet in schools some in rec centers recreation centers so they are all a little bit different um, so with that, I think I'm going to stop sharing and then we can have a discussion and I can also pull up the website. Hey, thank you so much. I don't know if you can already see there's a couple of questions in the chat. Um, Lori had one just a couple minutes ago about language access. Yeah, so like I was saying, the community councils are not required to meet a lot of the Open Meetings Act. Um, requirements where it is about accessibility and there there are not any language access opportunities available to community councils. So if it's needed, I would recommend um, maybe bringing somebody with or maybe arranging it with the council ahead of time to make something happen. Because um, like for example, within Spinard, I've never had anybody request it. I know there's a need for it. And it's something that our community council could potentially pay for if there's um, any uh, like financial need for it. We do, like I said, we all have um, bank accounts. Not many of them have a ton of money, but we prioritize what we spend it on and we vote as a council on what we can spend it on. And so language interpretation or even translation for written documents, those kinds of things could be access, but they just haven't been that I know of. And then I see another question about if you need to verify where you live or work to be able to vote or participate. Um, there isn't a verification. You do sign in and you include your address, either of your business or where you live. And that's one way that we can um, just double check and make sure that folks are um, within our community council and voting. And that's usually done because there have been issues that, um, you know, say there's a business that wants a, a license, a liquor license. They could mobilize a bunch of people they know to show up at the meeting to vote and they may not live within the council area. And so it's just to make sure that folks who live within the community council boundaries are uh, participating in the vote. So it isn't like bring in uh, mail or anything to show what your address is. It's just make sure when you sign in, you can include it. I 
Any other questions? Does anyone know what their council is or want me to dig into it on the website? I have a, a quick question, Lindsay. Um, is there any requirement to be an officer on a community council other than that's your council? That's the only requirement. It's just if you are a member of your community council, you can serve as an officer. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend it? I do. I feel <laughs> so I feel really fortunate right now because I'm serving on an executive board that is all women. I think everyone on this um, meeting tonight might also be. But something about it is just like a really productive space. And so I feel really supported. Uh, as president, it can be really difficult because you're facilitating the meetings and there's always a lot going on. And there's there are a lot of issues that kind of come in and out all the time. And so just to know that everybody else has my back on the executive board has really been helpful, especially since we're so distant this past year. Um, it's been really nice. So we have our um, executive board meetings every month, just like a, a week and a half or so ahead of the, um, the full council meetings. And that's where we come together to catch up, to hear what's going on, and also to kind of run through the list of requests and issues and things so that we can build our agenda together. So it's been a really good process and a really nice um, way to stay and be connected with my neighbors. And I see another really good question from Lori. What about people unhoused? Do they have access to community councils? And I would say they do, but community councils in themselves, I think are, are quite selective. They're self-selecting and, and often difficult to engage in because you either need to be on their email list and kind of know when the meetings are happening. You have to know where or how to go to get there. And even with the meetings being online, you have to have technology and access to either a phone or a smartphone or a computer to access it. And so there are a lot of, um, I think, just natural in things that inhibit participation. And folks who are unhoused are welcome. Um, and I would say, it, you know, it's also an issue that comes up all the time where, where they are not represented in the conversations around housing or um, homelessness or even camps and things around neighborhoods. Those issues come up almost every month. And I haven't um, at this point been to a meeting where somebody is currently unhoused. There are some folks who were formerly unhoused that can share their experiences. Um, but because of how we can communicate and spread the word, it's either by email or mail to an address, that it can be challenging. Any other questions? Okay, I'll just really quickly open the website and go through because I know those screenshots aren't, aren't usually the easiest uh, way to find it. Um, and, and really you can shout out and tell me if you have a <laughs> council that you want me to dig into. Um, but if you go to communitycouncils.org, it takes you to this website. It's kind of the main page. And this is a picture of the actual um, office that the Federation of Community Councils is in so the the representatives and location it's all listed here but I'm just going to point to the find your council tab and this is what pulls up all the different councils and this map of councils because I think that's the the main and easiest one to check out um, it's it's literally putting in um, on the map which council and where so you can see they're all color coded. And if you type in your address to community councils, that gives you that opportunity to look there. So what I'm gonna type in is 2515A Street, which is the My Office Neighbor Works Alaska. Uh, and it pulls you in and you can see that our office is located in Midtown, 
really close to North Star Community Council. Um, but if you if you click on Midtown, it pulls up um, some of the information, including the website, so that you could uh, find your council really easily. So when I click on that, it takes me to that Midtown Community Council page. And, and I could have also gotten there just by going to the Find Your Council and going to Midtown. Um, but this is where you can find all the information when the next meeting is, where it is. So the Midtown Council meets in person and they also meet on Zoom. So the link is there. Uh, some more information, but they have some really quick, like here's where you go to find the agenda. Um, and then more information about some of the, the uh, Caribbean dreams. It looks like Ganja Guys of Alaska. So another marijuana license because there are a lot of real retail locations within Midtown. But if you click on that agenda, that's their last agenda meeting for June. And so again, it pulls up. You've got kind of that welcome and start to the meeting. You've got reports from elected officials or council representatives hearing notices that's kind of the new business where they're looking at these licenses for marijuana and liquor licenses old business these are things like zoning um, the alaska club could potentially be a shelter uh, 36 avenue interchange that's a road issue that they're looking to improve capital improvement survey is all of those rankings of the roads trails and parks projects um, some new presentation and, and announcements and all of that. So that's the quick and easy, just navigating to your council site. And you could look down the list to see officers, meeting information, agendas, past agendas, same with the minutes, which are the notes from previous meetings. You can go in there and see what, what folks have been talking about um, and on and on and on. So that's kind of the quick, quick way to, uh, just do some of that navigation to get to your council itself. Ah, there we go. Oh, perfect. I'm looking at an address for Alaska Literacy Project. So let me type that one in. So I'm going back to um, the map itself and then, oops, copy paste did not work. So uh, I'm typing in Rudikoff Circle. Alaska Literacy Program is in Russian Jack Community Council, which is great. So part of um, some of the focus areas that I have within NeighborWorks includes Russian Jack neighborhood. So we're talking about actually working on a community garden within the Russian Jack community council and so if i click on that and i and i just zoomed out so you could see it's it's bounded by the highway northern lights Praga, and boniface and if you go then to the website it takes you to their main page and their meetings they're also in person and online uh, but they take the summer off and so i'm not sure how their next meeting is going to go um, but you can find out again the same kind of information they're all set up in similar ways where you can look at their officers agendas all of those things you can see their bylaws um, but they also put all of their officer information so kendra is the president right now and this is her her phone number. So if you want to call her and ask what's going on, you can do that. Uh, Fred McCleary is the vice president. He's he's one of the main folks we're talking about this community garden on. Um, Sherry's their secretary and Lisa's the treasurer. And so they're um, a great council. They just they have their monthly meetings and then they hosted a community cleanup effort in May and have lots of different issues that they work on. But many of those folks are also involved in the Russian Jack Springs Park planning efforts uh, as well. So making sure that improvements to Russian Jack Springs Park are also improvements and align with what the community wants to see. So Russian Jack is one of my favorites. If you want to talk community gardens, get involved. <laughs> Lindsay, I have a real quick question specifically about Russian Jack, and Great. that is, 
that <clears throat> they say that they will post the Zoom link, but I have no idea where they post it because I've never been able to actually find the posting of the link. Sure, great question. So I just clicked on their agenda and it's always on their agendas that I know. So this is their agenda and um, like I said, they're all slightly different. So it's good to pull it up and it, it starts you with that welcome and all of the reports that they have. And just a note about the school board <coughs> reports, school board representatives represent all of Anchorage. So they divide up each council amongst themselves. So you have a representative who could tell you about what's going on in the school district at each of the council meetings. And then they, I think they rotate every year or every few months. So that's just a cool way to do it since they're citywide representatives. Um, and then they went into all of these topics and this topic number nine is is um is a neighbor works topic because we were there talking to them about what community project they wanted to prioritize and we talked about community gardens beautification projects within russian jack springs park like tree planting or flowers putting a mural on the tunnel under the bar thinning out some of the woods near polar bear park we might do all of those things but they voted on the community garden as the first priority. Um, so that's just the note there, but their, their Zoom meetings are at least always on their agenda. And I think they're separately emailed out as well. But thanks for that question, Lori. Thank you. And then another thing just to note on their agenda is they have all of the contact information. So if you live within this council area, it has all the different assembly members and representatives and also municipal services that you might want to go to. So quick and easy um, to see where to go. Any other questions? Did this spark anything for folks? Any random issues that you care about that you wonder how councils deal with or <laughs> do you mind um you mentioned that your first meeting might be a little intimidating um and there's like often people who've been there for decades and talk a lot. Do you have any like tips or advice you would give someone who might be trying to go to their first community council meeting? Or if maybe they have an issue, or maybe they don't, but I need some tips. Yeah, yeah. so I really recommend um, attending your first council meeting. And um, like I said, it felt a little bit intimidating just because I didn't know who would be there. And um, all of the board members and folks are volunteers. So they're also just trying to do their best and they might be busy or, you know, you know, talking amongst themselves, trying to hurry up and plan before the meeting. So it can be a little bit like, well, I don't know what to do here. But many of them are just really welcoming uh, because we are all doing our best. And so anybody who comes, we want to make feel really welcome and be engaged. So I guess a few tips could be to, to feel free to show up to your, meet, your council meeting. Um, and if you can, bring a friend or bring somebody with you just so you, you know, can have somebody to, to talk with, ask questions, um, digest what's happening. Um, but another good way to do it is to show up a little bit early. So you might be able to pull someone aside and say, hey, I'm new here and I have some questions. And if you can find one of the executive board members or somebody that can help just kind of um, navigate or make sure you have what you need, that's another good way to do it. So I always would note when people come early to introduce myself within Spinard, we kind of designate our vice president as the greeter. So she's always there willing and able to welcome people. And so many councils do that as well. Um, and I'd also recommend to go to your council meeting, even if you don't have an issue or anything on your agenda that you want looked at right away, just to get a feel for how it works. Um, Cause they're all slightly different. They're different people, so they're run 
differently. <laughs> and it's nice to just get a sense of how they go, who's there, and what kinds of things they talk about. Um, so that when you do have an issue that comes up and that, you know, sometimes it's cars are speeding down my block. Um, it's not safe because there's a park right there and there's a school and we don't have good sidewalks. So the cars are speeding and you might, you know, be reaching out to someone in this, in the city to get this problem fixed. They're going to point you to the community council. They're going to say, Hey, go, go to your community council. Each council looks at roads, trails and parks. And so with roads, they look at traffic issues like that and they can pass a resolution that then gets submitted to the assembly and to the departments. So if you already kind of know what the community council is like, it's, it's not as intimidating then to email the council and say, hey, I have this road project I need addressed. Um, you can kind of know who it is and, and what, what it's about so that you could then feel a little bit more comfortable and have a path forward on that project. So that's, that's just, that's one example I'm, I'm using because it, it's happened quite a few times since I've been serving as president and checking our email um, that people do reach out with uh, traffic or speeding issues in their neighborhood and it's like okay we need to pass a resolution on that so then I you know tell them the process and walk them through it and that's all fine uh, but it would it's always nice if they have have showed up to a meeting or just understand a little bit what it's like so that when I say, hey, can you come to the meeting and share about the issue, that it's it's a little bit more comfortable for them to do that. Great, any other issues? Can you talk a little bit about what it looks like to um, interact as a business? Like if we were to interact as ALP and have some advocates um, interact on our behalf, like what would that look like? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, business partners within our community are some of the um, best relationships we can cultivate are at these community council meetings. So as a nonprofit, you can always attend the council meetings and you might be able to help identify some of those barriers or issues that are happening just in your council that you're that Russian Jack that you guys are situated in that could then be taken across all the different councils. So when it comes to language barriers or access, there have to be solutions in the community and, and that's like one good way to identify them. Um, but I participate in lots of councils as a nonprofit representative for NeighborWorks Alaska. And um, it, it's one of my favorite things because I'm able to then hear about which issues or projects they want to be working on. There might be a role for us as an organization. And one example of that is with Mountain View. We don't have a office or property within Mountain View, but we wanted to identify a community project. And because they decided, hey, they want to work on a mural walk for for Mountain View. So having new murals put on all along Mountain View Drive, they had a resolution on their agenda. And we said, hey, we want to be part of that committee. We want to help make one of those murals happen. And we can help do outreach for some of the others, but we have funding to help support one mural. Um, and so we're able to step in there. And we wouldn't necessarily have known that was something they wanted to do if we weren't reaching out to them and participating in their meetings so that we could become part of some of their processes and help support their efforts. So that's um, just one example that's showing up. You can find it, you can work on aligning priorities and opportunities and just kind of building those new relationships to make some fun projects happen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other businesses are always welcome to participate in council meetings as well because they're members. Um, some examples are restaurants. I really love when restaurants come to our meetings because they often bring samples <laughs> of food or, or kombuchas. Zip kombucha opened up in, uh, not too long ago and they had a tasting. It was lovely. Um, and another business, uh, they just emailed me earlier today, was House of Harley. The Harley Davidson shop is in Spinard and they're gonna, they have a bike week coming up in August. And so they were giving us a heads up and wanted to help 
you know, see if we could help with outreach on it or if we wanted to table at their event and that kind of thing. So there's lots of opportunity to just be engaged and participate that aren't come to the meeting and get on the agenda. <laughs> like really it's about kind of um, bridging all of those connections. Lindsay, thank you so much for sharing all of this. I grew up here and I didn't really know any of this. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, you know, like I said, I, I love community councils because I think it is a really fun way to be engaged in the local issues that, that I think really matter. They make a difference and make an impact on what's going on in your day to day life and so it's um if you're interested if you're not sure how to go about it you can always reach out to me and i can be that person that comes and shows up and participates because like i said i've been lucky to be able to do that in my neighborhood in spinard and now with neighborworks alaska i'm able to do that in other councils like i said mountain view russian jack fairview midtown i'm just kind of circulating and <laughs> going to lots of council meetings to see what issues people care about and if there are ways that we can um, work together on them. You had read my mind. I was just going to ask if we could share your email one more time in the chat. Sorry, Erin, go ahead, please. No, that's okay. I was going to say there's a lot of PLMs on this call and um, you know, we, we've talked about getting involved on, in something in more politics and we want to do it together. And we like that idea, kind of a model like you do, where we want to bounce around where, you know, we know where um, clients are and problems that they're facing. So we don't necessarily want to stay in ALP's district, but kind of go where the problems are. So um, I'm really excited about this partnership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and even from my Spinard world, I would love to have your engagement for our community because we we don't, like I mentioned when we talked about folks who are unhoused, if they're able to attend and participate, there are a lot of barriers to getting folks to participate and engage. And some of that is um, making sure that you're reaching out to more folks in the community and making sure that people feel welcome and included and we're working on it but there's a long way for us to go to make sure that our councils are, like the folks who show up are representative of the district and that's not the case for most of our councils and so there's a lot of work that we can do and i think a partnership with alp would be really strong and help us in that direction So thank you. Please reach out to me, send me an email, invite me to your council, I'll be there. <laughs> and, and if you're interested, Spinard is having a potluck, a community potluck uh, this weekend on Saturday. And many councils kind of do these like summer uh, barbecues or potlucks just because we've all been you know, stuffed in our homes for the winter, but now it's summertime to connect. And so I'll put that information in the chat too. Folks are welcome to it, but you may also have a local potluck or barbecue in your neighborhood. That would be fun for you to also attend. <laughs> I agree with Lori. <laughs> yeah, your enthusiasm is continuous, Lindsay. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Great. Well, while you throw that info up in the chat, um, I think we have just a little bit of information also about the civics fair coming up on the 26th that we'd love to remind people about. And next week's session, oh, thanks, Naki, um, for understanding municipal government, we'll have Margo Bellamy and Jewel Jones. And um, this is, I think, also going to be really interesting and useful for, for families all across the city. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. And oh, I see the Facebook event link, Lindsay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Here's the civics fair information just as a reminder before you go, um, take a look. And we wish everyone a great evening and hope to see you back next week. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone.